If you were asked to make a list of the most unpredictable, secretive, and oppressive countries in the world today, it's a safe bet that North Korea would probably be at the top. As one of the last remaining totalitarian regimes, North Korea and its line of self-proclaimed supreme leaders have a history of oppression, human rights violations, and manipulation of its citizens, and a proclivity for displays of military power. In recent months, we've seen tensions rising between North Korea and many member states of the United Nations, as Kim Jong-un has aggressively pursued his goal of making North Korea a nuclear power. With so many nations in a military standoff, now seems like a good time to take a hard look at North Korea. Is Kim Jong-un a serious threat? or is he just the boy who cried Armageddon? To begin to understand North Korea's current position in global affairs, we need to look back to 2003. Kim Jong-un's father, Kim Jong-il, was supreme leader in 2003, and made the decision to withdraw North Korea's membership in the Treaty of the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons after US allegations that North Korea had started an enriched uranium weapons program. This made North Korea the first nation to withdraw from the treaty, and needless to say, caused concern among the other signatories. Three years later, in 2006, North Korean officials announced that they would conduct a nuclear test in the future, but did not provide a specific date. Sure enough, one week later, the United States Geological Survey detected a magnitude 4.3 seismic event emanating from within North Korea, which indicated a nuclear test. These suspicions were confirmed shortly thereafter with an announcement that the North had indeed completed a successful underground test of a nuclear fission device. The consequences of this test were severe. The United Nations, the European Union, and the individual countries of the US, Japan, South Korea, and China enacted sanctions against North Korea that targeted the country's systemic vulnerabilities by blocking their offshore hard currency reserves and reducing potential income with trade and financial sanctions. The overarching goal of the long list of sanctions was to diminish Kim's ability to pay for North Korea's large military, thereby significantly weakening the nation. Unfortunately for everybody, these sanctions have done little to curb Kim Jong-un's enthusiasm for pursuing nuclear proliferation. In the years since their first nuclear test, North Korea has conducted at least five more with increasing power. The most recent, detonated in September of 2016, is considered to have been the largest yield, with estimations ranging from 9 to 12 kilotons. By comparison, the bomb that decimated Hiroshima in World War II had a yield between 13 and 18 kilotons, whereas the modern B-83 bomb, the most powerful nuclear device in US active service, has a yield up to 1.2 megatons. Regardless of yield, nuclear tests of any sort are in direct defiance of United Nations Security Council resolutions and place North Korea squarely on most of the world's bad side. In mid-April of 2017, North Korean officials announced that they would be conducting another nuclear weapon test very soon. The North claims to be improving their arsenal in both quality and quantity and have stated that their swords are drawn and that the United States would be wise not to provoke them further. Many have suggested that the recent United States airstrike on Syria has caused North Korea great concern, as it appears that the president has a low threshold for use of force. Other nations around the world are beginning to become uneasy with the rising tension between the United States and North Korea. We have two of the most unpredictable people on the world stage facing off against each other. You have armed armadas uh, in position, and you have uh, 11,000, reportedly, pieces of artillery aimed at Seoul. It's an explosive situation. The question is, how will it be resolved? But what would be the outcome of open hostility between the two nations? The United States and its allies in the region are certainly prepared for the possibility, and there are defenses in place for the event of a nuclear attack. South Korea, often considered to be in the most immediate danger, has what's called the Kill Chain Preemptive Strike System, which is designed to alert the military of North Korean missile launch procedures and shut down the launch facilities using South Korea's own conventional warheads. The US and South Korea engage in regular training to prepare for such an eventuality and practice what they refer to as the 4D operational strategy, which stands for detect, disrupt, destroy, and defend. The goal of this plan is to utilize preemptive military options to eliminate North Korean nuclear launch capabilities and, many suspect, North Korean leadership. The idea of preemptive strikes is difficult for a number of reasons, not the least of which being the fact that such actions would be hard to justify diplomatically. But another problem for preemptive strikes is that as North Korean military power increases, more and more of their missiles are being deployed on mobile launchers scattered across the country, and the army has started using solid-fueled missiles which require far less prep time and can therefore be fired almost entirely without warning, making them harder to track. So what if the North does manage to get their nuclear missiles into the air? South Korea and Japan, another likely target, have missile defense systems in place. South Korea has their KAMD system, as well as the support of an American THAAD battery, which was deployed following North Korea's recent firing of four missiles into the Sea of Japan. Between the two systems, South Korea has the ability to shoot down North Korean missiles long before they reach their intended target. 
In addition to land-based defenses, the United States, South Korea, and Japan have all deployed several Aegis destroyers, which have a ballistic missile system capable of tracking and eliminating multiple missiles simultaneously. The United States has also placed its own missile defense systems in Alaska and California, and Japan has plans to bolster its own defenses. While these defenses may seem to make North Korean aggression a non-issue, that isn't exactly the case. There are some inherent problems with missile defense systems. Namely, most of them have never been tested in actual combat. There is always the possibility that one or several missiles could slip through the defenses and cause unspeakable damage. There is also the issue that North Korea may be able to develop rockets capable of delivering separating nuclear warheads, making defending from all of them nearly impossible. If it comes down to outright war, most experts agree that North Korea would be overwhelmed by the strength of the US, South Korea, and other allies, but the death toll would likely be horrendous. In the event of all-out war, South Korea will execute what they call the Korea Massive Punishment and Retaliation Plan. The objectives would be to use special forces to cripple North Korean assets and eliminate their leadership, as well as completely demolish Pyongyang using missiles and artillery. One unnamed South Korean defense official stated in an interview, The North's capital city will be reduced to ashes and removed from the map. Every Pyongyang district, particularly where North Korean leadership is possibly hidden, will be completely destroyed by ballistic missiles and high explosive shells. North Korea has repeatedly threatened nuclear attacks on the United States, but it's suspected that it will take at least a few years before they have the capability. The world knows North Korea is working on intercontinental ballistic missiles capable of striking the US, but it's uncertain just how far off they are from reaching this goal. Then there's the big question many have regarding this tense situation. Why? Why would North Korea put its very existence on the line by pursuing their nuclear weapons program and threatening world powers? The best answer we have is that North Korean officials truly believe that securing their spot as a nuclear power is the best way to ensure their future safety. With a massive arsenal of weapons of mass destruction, who would dare challenge their glorious leader? Pyongyang fears that without superweapons, the United States, which it sees as the ultimate threat, will eventually wipe North Korea off the map. It's very difficult to understand the reasoning behind a cult of personality like Kim Jong-un, but it's put the world in a very precarious spot. Some have compared North Korea achieving nuclear capabilities to a child finding his father's handgun. But in reality, it's more like a child showing up to a family reunion with a box of homemade pipe bombs and the detonator in hand. It comes down to a difficult decision. Launch a preemptive strike and potentially save tens of thousands of lives, but start a war in the process, or attempt to deter them and hope that they're bluffing. There's a fine line between deterrence and provocation, and we'll just have to hope that the leaders involved know how to walk that line. If you'd like to learn more about the history of North Korea and its ambitions, check out the links in the description. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and leave a comment down below with what you think about the rising tensions and potential for war. You can watch my other videos about weapons and warfare by clicking here, or watch all of my videos by clicking here. Make sure to follow Second Thought on your favorite social media, and a special thank you to all my patrons on Patreon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.